2.5 Factorising. This is part of my Further Maths GCSE Ultimate Revision Guide, the Algebra section. Here we have the index button, it'll take you back to the index for algebra. And here we have some links to videos on these type of factorising questions that are from the Further Maths uh, exam papers. Okay, let's run through four examples of the sort of factorising you should be able to do for Further Maths GCSE. Um, and I'm assuming that you are familiar with the idea of factorising. You should be able to factorise a quadratic. You should be able to factorise um, something where you've got a difference of two squares. So if you have um, something like x squared minus 36, then you should know that that's x plus 6 times x minus 6. Um, here we have the next sort of level up from that when you have some, a multiple of x squared and then you have a square number. So if this number here is a square number then what we can do is we can put that into a bracket so um, what is the square root of 4? Well that's 2 and we've got the square root of x squared is x so 2x squared is the same as 4x squared and we're taking away 5 squared. So again, we're, we're, we're subtracting two square numbers, um, 2x squared and 5 squared. So we can write that in a pair of brackets where we have 2x plus 5 and 2x minus 5. Um, we also might be given something, a slight variation on this, could be something like 8x squared minus 50, where that's double this one. So if we start by taking out a factor of 2 before we get 4x squared minus 25 and now we can factorize this bracket so our answer will be the same as this one but with a 2 on the front. Okay so this question 2 so this is this is a tricky variation on a quadratic where we've got a y in there here for a, instead of a number here. So a way of, way of working through this is if we just if we just try to figure out what this would be if y equals 1. So let's look at what 12x squared plus 1x, or just x, and if y is 1 minus y squared be minus 1. Can we factorise that? Okay, so what we're looking for here is numbers that multiply to give us 12, sorry, multiply to give us 1, which then when we times, um, depending on the x bit, so we need to multiply to give us 1. Well, that's got to be minus 1, sorry, so that's got to be plus 1 and minus 1. And then we want numbers that multiply to give us 12x squared. So it's got something x times something x. So we could have 12 and 1, or 6 and 2, or 4 and 3. And when we add them together, because one's positive, one's negative, they're going to be one apart, and the, the bigger one's going to be the positive one. So if we think about what numbers multiply to give us 12 that are one apart, well, that's going to be 4 and 3. And we need to put the 4 so that when we times by the plus 1, that gives us a positive 4 and a 3 times the minus 1 gives us a minus 3, so that is, adds to give us 1x. And then all we've got to do is realise we used y equals 1, so where the 1s are we just replace those with y's. So this one's going to be 3x plus y and 4x minus y. And we can look through that how that works, so we've got y times minus y is minus y squared, then we've got 4xy minus 3xy, well that's just xy, and 3x times 4x is 12x squared. So that can be quite a useful technique is to, to, to replace one of the letters with a number. Okay, this question three looks like it should be a one, one bracket factorization because we've got an x here and an x cubed here. We can certainly take out an x from both expressions and the letter and the, the number eight. So if we take eight out and x out out of the bracket, uh, out into a bracket, so we got um, x squared let left there because 8x times x squared is 8x cubed and we've got um, minus 9 left here because minus 9 times 8x is minus 72x. Okay so we've got one bracket but uh, hopefully we can spot that this bracket is again back up to here a difference of two squares where the square numbers are x and 3. So that's just going to be equal to 8x, x plus 3, x minus 3 to give us the minus 9 and the x squared. So got to be careful, always spot, see if there's any more factors. But certainly the 8x works, and then we have to um, continue that factorization. Okay, here's one we've got an expression we're supposed to factorize. So we really need to uh, multiply all this out 
and then factorize what the resultant of it. So we're going to multiply out this uh, double bracket 3x plus 7 all squared. With a bit of practice, you sh eventually, I don't know if you can do this now, but you will be able to do these in your head. So you, you, what you're doing here is 3x squared, which is 9x squared. And then we're doing 3x times 7, and then 7 times 3x. So we, what we do is multiply these two, two together and double it. So we get 21x doubled is 42x. And then we've got the, the 7 squared, which is 49. Be careful not to miss this middle term out. A very common mistake is just to, to square the first and last term and not do the multiplying of each other. Because this is actually a double bracket. So we're looking at something like this where we've got four terms and we multiply it out. OK, and well then we're subtracting this other one. And again, we've got to be careful with the, the subtracting and any negatives in here. So what I'm going to do to start with, I'm just going to put this all, the result of this bracket into another bracket so that I can figure out what I'm going to do with the minus signs afterwards. So ignore the minus sign, just deal with the bracket. So we've got 2x all squared is going to be 4x squared. We've got 2x times minus 3 is minus 6x, and then that's doubled to make minus 12x. And then minus 3 squared is plus 9. And we're going to take all that away. So this is the same as 9x squared, and then we minus 4x squared. So I'm going to do it one section at a time. Then we've got 42x. Oops, 42x. We've got plus 42x, and then we're taking away minus 12x, which is the same as plus in 12x. And then we've got 49, take away 9. So we've got 5x squared, plus 42 plus 12 is plus um, 54x. And then we've got 49 take away 9 is plus 40. And then we've got to try and factorise this. Um, factorising expressions with uh, multiple x squareds and, and uh, a number on the end that has lots of different possibilities. Um, it's quite difficult to, to, to pick out the factors. Now there's, there is a really nice technique you can use here um, that uh, it's not that common but really works nicely is if you um, if you take this 5 and make both brackets 5x so in a sense what we're doing is we're multiplying this whole expression by 5x. So if I times, sorry not by 5x, by, by another 5. Um, if I times this 5 by this 40 to make 200. And then I'm thinking of factors of 200 that um, add to make 54. Now that might sound quite daunting but um, they're all pluses so there's nothing complicated here. So we've got 200 or 1, um, 102, 50 and 4 and Hopefully you spotted 50 plus 4 makes 54. And we could go on 25 and 8 and so on until we get all the uh, most of the factors and then find the ones that multiply to give this middle number. So the 50 and 4 multiply to give that. So if we put plus 50 plus 4, now that's not the answer, but we're nearly there. All we need to do is factorise out that 5 that we multiply the whole expression by in the first place. So we're going to factor out the 5 from this first expression to get um, x plus 10 and 5x plus 4. And that will give us what we want, this expression here, because we've got x times 5x is 5x squared, 10 times 5x is 50x, plus 4 is 4, uh, 54x, and 10 4 is a 40. Now you could have done that the other way, but there's no real you know, searching for answers. When you've got um, an x and 5x, you have to check lots of different variations, which is quite tricky. But when they've got the 5x and 5x, we don't have to do that. We just have to find the what two numbers that add to make 54. And that's a much easier thing to do. So there we go, that's that factorised. Uh, x plus 10 and 5x plus 4. Okay, so that's the, the, uh, so the examples for factorisation. Um, any more that I can find that I've done exam questions for, I shall put into this box down here. And I should try and put a video in for this method here, because I, I really do believe if you get the hang of this method, it will save you a lot of time on trying to find the factors. Unless you're really, really good with your numbers and you can spot these factors really quickly anyway then this method is not ne that necessary.